What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanna go over with you guys why I failed my first 100 mile race. So first I wanna start off and talk about what failure actually is. See, for me, failure is an opportunity to learn and improve in a positive way. If I were to never fail, then I would never know what it takes to improve myself and, and how, do I, how I can actually succeed in something. I feel like winners never continuously win without having losses in the past. Yes, there's people that go out there and they win and win and win, but I'm sure if you look in their past, you would see a lot of failure. This is something we don't see. You got a guy like Jeff Bezos who started Amazon in his garage. I mean, I can't imagine how many times this guy actually failed before succeeding exponentially. and. We don't see that and we, we, don't, we only worry about the successful part. Wow, he's the richest guy ever or Kobe Bryant is the best basketball player ever. And we never see all the hardships in life. But from my own experience, I know having these hardships and having these failures are the reasons why I am gonna be successful and why I'm gonna go and crush my next 100 mile race, which is the Beast of the East 100 come this December. So let's bring it back why I actually failed and, and what happened to me. So I had to DNF at mile 81 and the reason was that it started raining earlier in the race before mile 50 and I was running on wet feet, wet socks, wet shoes and my feet blistered up really badly. and. I was mentally ready for this race. I was physically ready for this race. And I promise I would have finished this race if it wasn't for my feet blistering up. But the reason why they did that is because I really did not pay attention to my feet. My feet were like babies. They, they've never experienced this much mileage ever in my life. Now I know after this happening, what I have to do to prevent my feet from blistering up as bad as they did during this race. So there's a few things and a lot of stuff I've read and researched and figured out that I have to do. And I wanna let you guys know before you do an ultra marathon or if you struggle with blisters on your feet and what you can do to prevent that. I'm not saying that you're not gonna get blisters on your feet, which you probably will, but they won't be as severe as mine are. As you can see in the pictures that I have of my feet post race. I mean, it was pretty gnarly. It was, uh, it was very painful and it took weeks, if not like two months for my feet to finally totally heal. So some things I'm doing more often is when I'm at home and walking around the house, I am completely barefoot. I am just trying to strengthen my feet, the bottoms of my feet and callus my feet as much as possible so that they are just building strength this whole year. Another thing which I had no clue would help with my feet is going to get pedicures and really just like bringing down the calluses, cleaning it off and then rebuilding it. And that supposedly will help me out a lot. So I'm definitely looking to go get pedicures once a month, every other month, but really just have a lot of feet maintenance and make sure I'm staying on top of you know, bringing down these calluses because what happens is the calluses are the ones that are gonna blister up again. That is gonna be the first thing to blister up the next time I go on a really long run, especially if my feet get wet. Next, I got a ton of pairs of 
toe socks. I use Injinji, I hope I'm saying it right, Injinji toe socks. Um, supposedly this helps. I've heard many elite ultra marathoners talk about wearing toe socks and how that has helped them tremendously in, bl in preventing blisters. And what I do is I take, I use Squirrel Nut Butter Happy Toes. Um, and I'll put a link in the description below of the ointment that I use. I've already suggested it to a few of my other runner friends so that they can prevent it. They can prevent blisters from happening. Um, I've used it a lot. I haven't gone on a really long run yet or my feet haven't gotten wet enough where I had it on and I could see if it really works really well, but I'm pretty sure it does because Squirrel Nut Butter is a great anti-chafing um, ointment that I use and that really prevents chafing so I bet that this ointment is a success and, and it helps a lot. So what I do is I put the ointment on my toes and then put the toe socks on and it creates this little cave for each one of my toes and it prevents that friction which causes the blisters. So having the ointment, doing the pedicures, wearing the toe socks, walking around barefoot to build my feet, to build strength in my feet and the bottoms of my feet are all ways I can prevent from these blisters happening again. And I'm gonna have a test when I do my 50 miler in April and see if these measures are working. And April is still, I think four, so eight months out from the BC East 100. And I'm gonna have a bunch of long runs leading up to it. I'm sure I'll have enough trial and error before the Beast of the East so that I know 100% that is not gonna be an issue. And of course, I know 100 mile race, anything can happen. I can trip and fall and bang up my ankle, and bang up my knee, who knows what can happen. But I can control the controllables and this is something I didn't do and why I failed, failed this race. And I say failed like that because like I said in the beginning, failure is not a big thing. It, it's not what you may think failure means. Some people say, oh, I failed and they give up. But you have to look at failure as an opportunity to learn and improve yourself. And that's what I'm doing. I'm looking, wow, my feet blistered up real bad. What can I do to prevent that from happening next time? Now, my training was a big success for this race. So I'm gonna continue to train as I did. I keep my mileage pretty low. I worked up to a 72 mile week before the Beast of the East. And for this race that I'm doing the 50 miler, I'm again gonna work up to around a 70 mile week and doing a ton of back-to-back -back long runs, meaning I'm gonna run 20 miles one day and then the following day I'm gonna run another 20 miles and ramp it up. So it could be 30 miles on Saturday and 30 miles on Sunday. And the back-to-back -back long runs, I feel, helped me tremendously. And because I race in the mountains and both of the, most of the ultra marathons I've done were in the mountains, I do a lot of climbing with that. Right now it's freezing where I live, so I've been doing a ton of treadmill runs, but of course I'm cranking that treadmill up to 15%, 5, 10, 15%, and using that incline to help my legs get used to the climbing along with leg strength training and all types of strength training. And I'm also implementing Olympic weightlifting, which I did before I started running. And now I'm implementing it again to work on my speed and power. So overall, I'm feeling really good training for these races and I'm really excited to race again and put all this training to test and see what I can do and, and make some noise in this ultra marathon world and I'm just gonna continue to train hard, continue to prevent these blisters from happening, and you know, what else gets thrown my way? I'm sure I'll have many, many more failures along the way because the mileage I run is just open water for failure. You know, once you get past the marathon, and even in a marathon, there, there, it's so many miles and so much time on your feet, anything can happen. So the really cool and unique thing about this sport is that you have to learn how to adapt and just keep pushing forward. And it teaches you a lot about life, right? Life is all about adapting to what happens. I mean, look what COVID hit, look how many businesses got hurt, but look at all the businesses that overcame it. And look at all the, you know, troubles that may, maybe you had in your life that you overcame. So 
You always have to have an optimistic look. And in my eyes, that is the way to keep moving forward. You can't be pessimistic about life because you're just gonna be stuck. And I love that ultra marathon can continuously teach me that and show me that. And I'm just, I'm just so excited to uh, move forward in this sport and continue on doing it for hopefully the rest of my life. It's a quick video I just wanted to give you guys on why I failed my first ultra, my first 100 mile race and why I will not fail the next one um, because now I know what to do. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked this video and if you did, smash that like button and if you're not already, subscribe to my channel and follow me along and always remember to push your limits. Peace.